So today's topic is the bones of the upper limb. And the bones of the upper limb can be divided into, let's say, four groups. Uh, the shoulder, that includes uh, clavicle and scapula. The arm, that includes humerus. Forearm, ulna and radius. And finally, the hand with the carpal bones, metacarpal bones, and uh, phalanges. So let's start with the bones of the shoulder. And the first bone we will cover, it is the scapula. So the scapula is basically the flat bone which is located on, uh, on the back of the shoulder, more like a wing shape. And, uh, and, it, and the scapula articulates with the humerus and articulates also with the, with the clavicle. And um, so let's talk about the topography of the scapula now. So in order to understand the form of the scapula, I blocked it out. So it's, so it's easier to understand the form. So the first part of the scapula, uh, which is invisible, basically it's always covered with muscles, is the body of scapula. And the next important part is uh, spine of the scapula, which is the most important bony landmark, which is visible on, on a surface. And later I will show some pictures and I'll explain you how to, how to spot it. So the next is uh, medial border of the scapula, inferior angle of the scapula. Inferior angle of the scapula is actually uh, always hidden in the muscles, and it's visible only if the person is quite lean or uh, the, the scapula is retracted. And now let's talk about the spine. The spine can be also divided into several parts. There is some very important bony landmarks like trigonum. Trigonum is this bony triangle where the spine and the medial border meets. And the chromium process, basically, that's like the bony part of the spine which goes around the shoulder. This is the view from the top. So you can see the spine of the scapula goes around the shoulder and uh, therefore scapula it uh, takes not only the back part of the shoulder, but it goes around and actually is visible. If you look from the front, you can see it even in the front. So this is the same part. It's a chromium process. It's like a roof which hangs over the humerus. And there is another bone uh, called coracoid process, another small uh, protrusion. It's like a hook-shaped bony uh, process. It is very important to talk about these two bony landmarks, the coracoid process and the uh, chromium process. From those two elements of the scapula originate some very important muscle tendon. So this is another view. You can see the coracoid process and uh, the chromium process which goes around. Now it's time to talk about the morphology and physiology of the shoulder blade or the scapula. When you look at the back of the, of the model, there's a lot of shapes, and most of those shapes are created by muscles. And uh, basically, if you think so, you're pretty much right. But, but all the muscles have some origins and insertions, so basically they are connected to the bones. And if you don't understand the movements of the bones, and, and the shoulder blade is a very mobile bone, it moves quite a lot, and it's very free-floating bone. So if you don't understand the position of the bone, you cannot actually project the, the, the muscle. So let's add some shoulder blades to the picture so you see the shoulder blade and then you look at the back and you think how can i put it in so where is the where is the place where the shoulder blade is supposed to be so and i will show you because the left arm is lifted up the shoulder blade is rotated and uh but we'll talk about this rotation of the shoulder blade a little bit later but you understand the muscle in this case this is trapezius muscle this is this bus muscle the trapezius muscle goes along with the, with the shoulder blade. So basically, you see, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of movement happened there. So in this picture, I'm adding the trapezius muscle. So you can see the left side of the trapezius muscle have changed. So look at this muscle, the, this left side of the trapezius muscle, and the right side of the trapezius muscle. And you see that the form is fairly different. See? These elements, trigonums, we know already, they, they change their position and because the arm is lifted up. So, and we know that trapezius muscle is connected to the shoulder blade, so it also uh, stretched in one side, totally different than on the right side. So let, let's, let, let's look closer. 
So we see this uh, trigenome, this triangle, uh, it's here, and then we see the spine. And the spine is always, always noticeable. It's always visible. You can always spot the spine. And the same time, the same thing with the chromium process. It's never covered with the muscles. And you see the deltoid muscles on the top and one side, and because the arm is lifted up, there's a, some sort of a valley here in between the, the trapezius muscle and, uh, and the deltoid muscle. And the spine, as you see, is visible. And the medial border is also visible in, in, in one side and another side. But if you look at the inferior angle of the, the scapula, you don't see that angle because it's covered by this large muscle called latissimus dorsi. In this case as well. I, in, in, this, in this picture, I didn't put, uh, didn't put colors, but you can still see. You see there is this uh, trigenum, this triangle, and uh, triangle shape here and if you look at the on the right side you can spot it here in this case the spine of the scapula is not inside it's not inside because this this model is not very uh not very muscular so therefore the spine of the scapula is more like sticking out so it goes up and then you see there is like a, a chromium process and the deltoid muscle attached to it and then you can barely notice there is this uh, little uh, change in, in light, and that's the medial border of the scapula. So you, you, you're more like investigator. So you see some elements, and then by these few elements, you can guess where the rest of the bone is actually located. And if you correctly project it, then it's easy to add the muscles to the picture. So in this case, you see this line, and it's basically the, the, this is trapezius muscle, so that's the edge of the trapezius muscle. And as we know, this edge of the trapezius muscle goes along, along the spine, the medial spine of the scapula. So it gives us clue where the angle is located and how to project the rest of the scapula. It's just like a few examples how to, how to, how to use the knowledge of the bones in making of the correct projection of the muscles. So in this case as well, the shoulder blade is not colored, but the colored muscles. So we see this red color that's muscle called deltoid, blue one, that's the muscle called trapezius muscle, goes around the trigenum and goes down. On the right side, on that edge of the trapezius muscle, we see the medial border of the, of the scapula. And then latissimus dorsi covers the inferior angle of the, of the shoulder blade. Another thing what uh, people don't understand uh, is it's the angle. So if, if your arms are in the rest, so and this model is very, very lean and very, um, I'm sorry for the picture. It is very, uh, very thin person, probably not very healthy. But again, this gives us very precise uh, picture of what's going on inside. And we see the bones. Usually you don't see so much of the bones because people have subcutaneous fat and the people have also some, uh, some muscle thickness. So it's, it's, it's usually covered. But this person is very lean, uh, in some sort of bulimic, and so you can see the, mm, the shoulder blades. And note the one thing, the shoulder blades are not, they are not parallel. Upper part are a little bit closer than the lower part. So that's a very important thing. And if you look at the, if you look at the spine of the scapula, it's also not perpendicular. So if you take the, the medial border and spine, it's usually not, not, not the case. So if you take the medial border, and you add the spine, it is a little bit in the angle, and the whole thing is a little bit in the angle, like you see here. The lower uh, corners, the distance between the lower corners in the rest is larger than, uh, than the trigenome part. But again, if you look at the arms, arms are pretty much on the rest, so they are parallel to the body. The height of the, of the scapula is approximately the same distance in between the scapulae. So, Distance A and distance B is pretty much the same. And it's important to understand that this tip works only if your arms are at the rest. Space in between the, the shoulder blades are, are very changing. And the reason why it is changing is because the shoulder blade is a part of the upper limb. And the upper limb can, can be moved in the various uh, different directions. So in this case, if you look on the right side, is rotation of the, of the scapula. 
And uh, of course, if you rotate the scapula, I'll explain you in the next slides uh, the mechanics of it. So the shoulder blade also moves ahead, so the distance increases. The same thing happens if you look from the top. So imagine this is the head, this, these are the shoulders, and this is the thorax. The shoulder blades, they slide around the, the thorax, and they basically change the position rapidly as you move. So in this case, this is retraction. This is when you move your shoulder blades backwards to the, to the central line, to the spine. And protraction, it is if you move your arms forward and your shoulder blade slides along with, the, with your upper limb. And uh, how it is done, because if you look at the thorax, thorax is more like an egg shape, so it's more like a, some sort of a uh, mm, spherical shape. And the shoulder blade is also, also curved. So there, therefore it can go like this direction and it can slide also upwards and downwards. So this is examples of retraction and protraction. So you see, so in this case, the, the arm is moved forwards and the scapula moves along. So remember, there's like a plenty of muscles, we'll talk about them later, so that are connected to the, to the scapula. So, and if the bone is moving forwards, all the muscles are also moving forwards. And if you retract your scapula or your shoulder, all the muscles are also go along to the scapula. So, rotation of the scapula. So, what happens when you are lift your arm up? When you lift your arm up, your shoulder blade goes along with your arm. But it happens only when your arm is about like the shoulder level. So, if it's below the shoulder level, there is not much movement of the scapula. So, and I'll show you a little bit of mechanics of the, how the shoulder blade is moving. So you have a humerus, and then you have a scapula. So, and then you're lifting your arm up, and then it locks with a, it locks with a, a chromium process, and now it goes together with the with whole shoulder blade. So before it locks, it goes independently. So when your arms are in this position, they are not locked. So as you go higher, they lock and move the scapula along with the humerus. 